So in this video, we are going to look at a quantitative analysis of when we should put in an internal control. If you remember in our previous video, and I'll link that one up above if you missed it, um, we looked at what, or we said that an internal control is trying to prevent something bad or something with a negative effect to happen to our business. Now, for the purposes of this course, we're really focused on accounting information systems. However, we can also use this for the entire organization. So first, we would want to make a list of every potential threat that could happen. And that could be theft, a natural disaster, uh, we have some increased competition, Right now, we're facing a pandemic, so that is definitely a threat to many businesses. We could get hacked, um, and just the list goes on and on. All of those are different threats. Some of these we can control for, some we might not be able to. So if you think about each threat, what you want to do for this analysis is assign a dollar value of what that loss would be if that threat actually happened. This is actually known as the exposure or impact of the threat. So take, for example, an instance of shoplifting if you own a retail store. That would be, on a daily basis, a relatively small amount versus getting hit with a large tornado would be a much larger amount. But next, we want to take into consideration what the probability of that threat would be. And this is the likelihood. So the likelihood of shoplifting in a retail environment is quite high. So we would take that into account, even though the dollar value is quite a bit lower. Now, the likelihood of complete devastation due to a tornado is actually quite low and depending, will vary depending on what you, where you live. So if we take that exposure times the impact, this is called our potential expected loss. So let's look at this in an example. So I'm gonna bring up an Excel spreadsheet and let's make that just a little bit larger to fill up the screen. So we have, and this was a uh, problem was done very generic. And if you have the Romney book, this is going to be problem five in chapter seven. So this company has some type of threat. That original threat, it has an expected impact or exposure of $1 million. And it has a 5% chance of happening. So we have an expected loss without us doing anything of $50,000. So let's take with our, let's change it to our likelihood here. And for control A, we have now changed to a likelihood of 2%. So our expected loss would be 2% times a million, so 20,000. Remember our original expected loss was 50,000. So we've reduced our expected loss by 5,000 or 30,000. The cost of the control was 25,000. And I put these down here just for reference. All right, for control B, if we put whatever control B is in, we reduce our likelihood to 1%. That gives us a $40,000 expected loss. And that control cost uh, $30,000 to implement, whatever that is. So that gives us a net benefit of 10,000. So if these were our only two options, we would consider putting in control B, but not control A if we had to pick one. But hey, if one control is good, maybe two are better. So let's look at that. In this scenario, if we put in both, it takes us down to a 0.1% likelihood. So let's multiply that out. So that gives us a new expected loss 
of $1,000, which reduces it by 45. But to implement both controls, it would cost us $55,000, just adding up these two. Then we have a negative net benefit. Now, this is just a quantitative analysis. Now, if you are relying solely on that versus uh, taking into your entire scenario, um, you need to make sure that your estimates are pretty accurate. And so there is obviously some chance of error in our likelihood and in our exposure, because uh, these are just right now estimates. Plus, you want to take into consideration some quantitative things that may happen to your business that aren't necessarily quantifiable. So about six or seven years ago, Target had a large credit card breach. Now, they spent millions of dollars to fix the problem and even do some goodwill, but they may not have included into their calculations their lost sales and reputation that they had for a few years afterwards. Because keep in mind, this happened during Black Friday and the high Christmas shopping season, so a lot of people were affected and tended to not go back to Target for a while afterwards out of precaution. So they had a lot of what I would say non-quantifiable things happen to them probably in addition to lost sales or things that they may not have been able to predict when doing this type of analysis. So you want to start with a quantitative analysis, but then take it a few steps further and consider some of the other worst case scenarios within that you know, situation to make sure that you've covered everything. All right, thank you. I hope you uh, got a little bit better idea of some of the quantitative analysis behind controls.